Hi guys, what's up? Uh, it's Ryan, and as you might notice, this is Star Fox running at a double-digit frame rate. Um, last night on Twitter, I was posting videos of a bunch of different Super FX games running at overclocked speeds, and a lot of people were asking me, um, how do you do this? How is it done? Can you give me a tutorial on you know how I set this up? And well, I guess I figured I'd do a video about that today. Um, but first, a little bit of history. Um, way back in like 19, the late 1990s and early 2000s, um, there was a Super Nintendo emulator called ZSNES. And ZSNES was, it was an okay emulator, but it wasn't very accurate at emulating the Super Nintendo. And one part that it really, really had trouble with was the Super FX chip, which as you know, allows games like Star Fox, and Stunt Race FX and all these other games to run and use like 3D graphics on the Super Nintendo. Um, and ZSNES had a lot of trouble running these Super FX games. Um, they were slower than they were supposed to be and all these other problems. So what the ZSNES emulator ended up adding was an option to overclock the Super FX chip so that it would run faster than normal so that ZSNES could play Super FX games uh, better than it did. Um, and then, you know, many, many, many years later, like 10, 15 years later, um, along comes a new Super Nintendo emulator called Hygen or Hegon or whatever. And it used to be called uh, BSNES, and that's technically what we're going to be dealing with today is a version of BSNES. Um, but what BSNES is, or Hygen or Hegon or whatever you want to call it, um, what is special about this emulator is that it is a perfect emulator. Um, most emulators uh, struggle with accuracy. It's not always easy to get exact perfect output exactly like the console would do it. And I think there are even like NES emulators that are not perfectly accurate. Um, but BSNES or Hygen is perfectly accurate. It runs exactly like the real Super Nintendo hardware does. There will never be a Super Nintendo emulator that is better than Hygen. It is the end point for emulation um, for that particular console. And what we're going to be looking at here today is like a special version of Hygen, or I guess technically it's actually BSNES, um, that adds extra features to the emulator um, to extend its functionality. Like, for example, the ability to overclock Super FX chip games. So, now I'm going to tell you how I did it. Um, BSNES and or Hegon Hygen um, is available as a standalone emulator, but we don't want that. What I'm using it through is something called RetroArch. Um, RetroArch is kind of this special interface, um, it should be coming up here on screen, that um, basically serves as a hub for like 30 or 40 different emulators of like multiple systems like PlayStation and Sega Genesis and NES and Game Boy and Game Boy Advance and Wonder Swan and Virtual Boy. It's got all these emulators in it in this one convenient place. And one of the emulators you can use through RetroArch is BSNES. Um, and RetroArch can be a little tricky to set up, so um, I'm just going to quickly go over that. Um, once you get into this main menu here, which shouldn't be too hard, um, I think it like auto configures your controls and everything, but once you get into this main menu here, you scroll down from start core, load core, load content, you get down here to online updater. What you want here is the core updater, and this is all the different emulators that RetroArch supports. And you'll notice that it is a lot. There was Dreamcast back there, Neo Geo, NES. Um, what we want is here. Super Famicom Super NES, BSNES Accuracy. Um, there's like a handful of different flavors of BSNES in here. Um, accuracy is perfect one-to-one -one accuracy, but um, if you have a slow computer, that might not actually work very well. So you can do balanced, which reduces the emulation accuracy just a little bit um, so that slower computers can use it. And then down here we have BSNES Performance, which is for really low spec computers, and that turns off even more accuracy related options. 
But what we really want is the BSNES Mercury builds. Um, the Mercury builds, for whatever reason, have the overclocking options that we want. The other builds probably don't have them. I don't know what any of these others really do. So just download one version of the BSNES Mercury build. And then you come back up here um, to load content. Select file and detect core. Whoops, I went a little too far. Sometimes the, um, the button detection on RetroArch isn't always the best. And as we'll find out, um, it's a little bit... RetroArch isn't perfect, um, but, you know, it's pretty good. I've been using it for a few years now, and what you want to do now is just uh, find a Super FX game. I have a lot of Super Nintendo games um, downloaded. Uh, where's, where's Stunt Race? Star Fox. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do Star Fox. So, oh, I just bumped my microphone with my controller. Sorry about that, folks. Um... So you select Star Fox, open archivist folder, starfox.smc. Um, and now you're going to notice something. Star Fox is running at normal speed. So press F1 and get back into the RetroArch menu. Uh, go down here to Options. Now you'll notice that all of these are turned on. Um, this is one of the bugs with the current version of RetroArch. Maybe by the time that you watch this, if it's months or years down the line, this will be fixed. Um, but one of the bugs in this current version of RetroArch is that um, it doesn't remember that you set your options. So you come in here and you go down to Options, and normally what it looks like is this. It looks like this. Respect accuracy impacting settings is turned on. Super FX speed is set to 100%. That's what it normally looks like. What you want to do is you want to come in here and you want to select... This should be turning off, but for some reason it goes to yes. This turns accuracy impacting settings off, which means that, you know, you can overclock the Super Nintendo now. So that... Now you scroll down here and it says Super FX Speed. This 100% is full speed. Two, uh, 150 is 1.5% speed. Uh, two times speed, three times speed, four times speed, five, and ten times speed. Um, normally I set it at 500%, five times speed, um, because, um, you know, the faster you set this, um, the more processing power in your computer you're going to need. Um, and sometimes if you set it up to a thousand, um, it gets to be, at least on my system, a little bit slow. Um, so now that you have all your options set, you can launch the game. And something I wanted to, I was getting at earlier is that these options do not save. Every time you launch a new game, you have to come into the options settings here and you have to touch them. So that means um, you just have to flip the Super FX speed around a little bit, and then it will say, oh, you have special options set. Because it will remember the settings themselves, but it won't apply them until you touch an option. It's That's a bug in RetroArch, and hopefully it'll be fixed in uh, later versions. So now we go back out here, and we go to resume. And what you're going to notice is that all of a sudden, Star Fox is running a lot smoother than smoother than normal. Sorry, I... Blah, blah, blah. Um, and something else we're going to notice here is that when Star Fox is running smoother than normal, um, it's actually running a little bit too fast. Um, it would appear that the developers at Argonaut and Nintendo, when they made Star Fox, they made it with the slowdown in mind. They knew the Super FX chip wasn't up to the task of rendering anything at full speed, so they just did what they could and, you know, planned for the slowdown in advance. And what this actually means is that now that the Super FX chip is running so, 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 so fast and the game is running at actual full speed, that it's running a little faster than it should. Um, you'll see here in the intro, um, normally this is like a 30 second sequence and it's over in like 10. Um, so the game is running just a little bit faster than normal, but it's it's not actually that unplayable. It's for running a processor at five times speed, 
Star Fox here is not playing at five times speed. It's just playing at a nice smooth frame rate because there's no more frame slowdowns. Um, but another thing you should note is that a lot of Super FX games um, seem to have a frame rate limit on them. So even though the Super FX processor inside the virtual Super Nintendo that we're using is running at 500% speed, um, the fastest frame rate that Star Fox will ever run at seems to be about 25 to 30 frames per second. So if you were hoping to play uh, Star Fox at 60 frames per second, um, that's technically not possible and may not ever be possible, but it's still running a lot faster than normal, a lot smoother than normal. Um, and normally this first Corneria level here is like a four minute level and we'll be done with it in a little over two minutes. Um, but yeah, that's how you overclock a Super Nintendo using RetroArch and uh, BSNES slash Hygen. Um, following the rest of this video will just be some quick clips of other Super FX games running at overclocked speeds. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. And um, you can follow me on social media to get all kinds of fun stuff like this um, whenever I end up posting them. Um, you can support me on Patreon so that I can keep doing weird, cool things like this for you guys um, and, you know, whatever else. So I'll see you later, I guess. And thanks for watching.